overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. And we are super excited today to have Jaquinton Means with us today. Jaquinton, could you please introduce yourself and tell the people what you do? Uh, yes. Um, I spent two and a half years as a minister in training in the Methodist Church um, and also spent a lot of time in high school being a, a journalist. And that kind of gave me this love for writing and being a minister gave me a love for um, history, spirituality, and um, religion and how it works inside of the human mind and how it can be good for us. And sometimes, as we know, throughout history it can be bad for us. And that really was inspired me to be a writer and write the way that I do and about the subjects I talk about. Very interesting. The book we're going to talk today about is called Willie. Willie started out going to have a different title. Could you tell us why you chose Willie instead of the other title? Um, I grew up learning about the Willie Lynch letter, or like I, I heard of it. It's like this um, folk tale in the black community. Um, so I've always grown up hearing about the Willie Lynch letter, but I had never um, listened to it for myself. And then I found that there's so much um, controversy on if it's being a real document or not. But when I when I actually read that document for myself, it just spoke to me in such a way. And when I looked out at the world around me and I looked out at my own black community, I could really see the effects of what was detailed in that letter. And I was like, well, you know, my book would be a lot better off if I could kind of show how these things affect us today in a kind of an allegorical historical tale. Um, and that's what inspired me to change the name because initially it was uh, run boy run um, and it was really just inspired by me and my best friend walking through the backwoods of arkansas um, he's dark-skinned i'm very light-skinned and me just thinking of like this bond of two friends that wanted their freedom and wanted to you know do whatever it took to get that um and like i said like once i once i read the william lynch letter for myself i just had a completely different perspective history tells a lot you know and I looked a little into that Willie Lynch letter myself because I never heard of it until I ran across your book and we hooked up for this interview. By going back, looking, and doing the research like you obviously have with this book, do you tie a lot of fiction and historical fact into this book? Uh, yes, I did. Um, there were so many. You know, Arkansas just has a very rich culture um, in history, especially in the times of the 1800s and the Civil War and the slave times. So I did the best I could to take real historical characters. At times I changed their names, at times I did not, um, and incorporate their real stories and put my own creative flair into it to get the message across. It's one of the best books I've actually read in today's society and what we're dealing with in today's environment, I think this book is really needed. Just the honest tone you have written with this book, it's going to hit a lot of people. Some people are going to find it offensive. I think they need to really read into this and take a deep dive into what is displayed in your masterful writing here. Your characters range from the master and all of his slaves. Within that hierarchy, there's a breakdown of different cultures within this plantation. Some are good, some are bad. How do you find 
the setting for this big plantation and was that a historical setting or was this a fictional thing made up by you? The plantation that is based on is a real plantation that still stands today in Chicago County, Arkansas, which is Lake Village. So it's based off of a real place. Um, and I looked at a lot of pictures online of what that plantation looked like. And then um, the other side came from me just studying old slave stories. Um, the Library of Congress in the late 1800s went in and they tried to interview as many surviving slaves as they could to get their narratives. So I listened to hours upon hours of this, just listening to the slaves tell their own stories. I read Frederick Douglass's biography. I read Diary of a Slave Girl, Uncle Tom's Cabin, multiple multiple slave uh, slave movies like Drum. Um, there was a movie called Freedom Road that uh, Muhammad Ali was in. And then, you know, other than that, it was just like hours upon hours of research of just studying the landscape of what slavery actually looked like in Arkansas in regards to the the world around it, um, the vegetation, the trees, different things. What did a slave shack actually look like? Where did the slave drivers, like how did they live? What did they eat? Um, so I just kind of took real historical, the real historical setting and whatever I couldn't find or couldn't, didn't have enough detail for, I just came up with my own imagination. Who do you as the writer see as the main character? Would it be Master James or possibly Sarah? It's kind of a mix for me. Um, in my mind, there's four main characters. Uh, Master James, for sure. Um, to me, Sarah is the main hero of the story. Um, and then John um, and Martha Ann. And obviously, Jacob's very important. Kai's very important. But for that first book, those are the main um, the main characters for me because they, I feel like through their emotions and through what they go through, they kind of dictate the direction of the story. You know, you mentioned Martha Ann. This character is obviously the daughter of James, the plantation owner. Then she's got this relationship that is just tremendous in the book with her half-brother. Without revealing a lot of the nature to this, how did you come up with that setting? Um, There was a lot of stories um, in slave history of masters having to break their children to indoctrinate them into the ways of being a slave owner or a slave master. Um, and so a lot of times they would use their siblings, their half siblings that the master would make with the slaves um, to prove to them what the hierarchy was and that blood, like uh, they had what they called the one drop law in those days, which meant if you had one drop of slave blood, then you were a slave. And that typically depended on um, the mother. So I, I just wanted to have that kind of dynamic to kind of show a real picture of what these children of slave masters went through um, when they were forced to go against human nature in order to keep the business of you know human property alive. It's incredible how human nature will allow us to violate one another in such remarkable horrendous ways there's stuff about growing up on the plantation and they wanted to separate and make examples of how you outlined that in your book it really hit home and i think a lot of us white people actually need to pick up this book and really understand how much ripples throughout time it's still a problem today especially mm -hmm. deep in the south down there i just commend you for your bravery on stepping up especially in today's world to write such an inspiration so growing up together on a plantation in the deep south during the civil war is starting and going into the civil war it had to be very difficult to even mix people with the races white and black it was more of a mandatory you didn't have any hope for uh, reconciliation of any problems like you outline in this book. So going forward into today's society, we have laws 
I think a lot of people, they don't understand how to use the law properly. And I think we need to start educating people in the laws and how to fight and combat the nature of racism. You are obviously trying to combat here in this book. How did you think writing this book would in any way help the political structure and the society's attitude towards the black people today? Uh, In in my mind, I, I believe that there's so much psychological trauma that has been passed down um, from the slave times to my generation, Um, a lot of fear-based trauma, a lot of white people being afraid of black people, a lot of black people being afraid of white people because of what happened during slavery. I mean, I I believe, you know, we've all seen the pictures of slaves, you know, slaves' backs after they've been whipped, the kind of chains and collars that they had around their necks. Um, We know the stories of the lynchings and, you know, the different things that happened um, throughout our history and, you know, sadly at times still happens today. Uh, so I kind of wanted to show people that we are afraid of each other based off of the sins of our ancestors. And in, in order for us to overcome this trauma and to be healed by it, we need to be honest that it happened, deal with it, process it, and then hopefully through understanding um, the sins of our forefathers, we can create something different for the children of tomorrow. Um, and I just believe that we can't get to that point unless we're willing to deal with the sins of the past and overcome them. You know, at the end of the day, and I guess this is probably kind of a controversial statement, but, you know, America was built on the back of slaves. Um, and it was built on a lot of blood and turmoil. Um, so in order to make that right, I believe that the only thing that we can do is be honest about that, upfront about that, Talk about it, discuss it amongst ourselves, have those feelings of guilt, have those feelings of anger, rage, um, have those feelings of, you know, feeling absolutely hopeless. Um, And then through that understanding that we're all human and that we need each other to survive. Um, And that was really the goal of the book. Um, And you see it more towards the end of the book and you will in the future books, too. But it's like at the end of the day, it's not so much about black and white as it is about, you know, we need each other. Yes, very true. I love that. Back when Barack Obama was elected, I really felt that a lot of this would go away, but apparently it hasn't. Mm -hmm. I think books like this, being truthful and not hiding the surges that happened and the disgusting things that occur in human nature, I think it's going to heal people. Politics, it one of those things that just make people mad. Back in 1988, Minor Jackson, Atlanta's first black mayor, said politics, although not perfect, was the best available nonviolent means of changing how we live. Politics is not an end. It's a means to an end. What I take away that we need the most is we need to make sure that we have laws written and enforced without prejudice. That's supposedly what our great nation is supposed to do anyway. All men are created equal. And I understand how a lot of people feel disturbed about the racial past, but the only way to get over it is coming through with books like this. Do you plan on writing more books? Oh, yeah. I, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's just in me now. Um, I'm addicted to, you know, I'm addicted to writing, so to speak. Um, It's like I'll have a vision in my head and I just cannot rest until it's out. And then Willie was like that. Willie, I worked on Willie for three and a half years. Um, a mix of research and, you know, actually writing, you know, times I would have to stop and check my notes and my facts and then go back to writing um, just to be in that mindset. But it's, it's like a part of my DNA. Like I I couldn't imagine um, living the rest of my life and never writing another book. So let's talk about the artwork on the book. To me, the scenario, the place in time doesn't actually fit what the cover art suggests 
why did you choose a uh, cover art in that manner in that fashion um i forget the word for it i think it's called of a, a an anachronism when you put something out of place in a mm. different time period um so i did that on purpose to kind of show how the things that are going on in the book of course it's a historical fiction but the same thought processes the same situations um that we deal with psychologically are very much alive and well today and i also wanted that cover to reach out to the younger black community too because it doesn't necessarily give away what the inside of the book um says um so i kind of wanted this wow factor to where you know you look at the cover and you're kind of like okay i see this you know native american girl this white girl these two black kids in the middle of the woods like what is this about but then when you read the book you understand more about the characters and the time frame, then it starts to make a little bit more sense to you. So it's more of like a um, a blending of the 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 old times, but still modern day thinking. Like we 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 would like to believe that we don't think how the slave masters of back then thought, or how the slaves of back then thought, or how the slave uh, catchers and and the slave drivers of back then thought. But in realistically we wouldn't have the same issues and problems we did today if we did not still think like them. Um, so that was really what I was trying to get across with that cover. I love that. That's awesome. Just thinking outside the box and challenging like that, that's very unique. Not a lot of people have that, and we really need more of that. Is there any truths that you need people to really understand about this writing? I think the main thing I want people to understand is like um, my goal for writing that story was not necessarily um, to hurt anyone. Um, that was not my desire uh, for writing the story, but I know that there's a lot of painful things in there. And I actually, you know, wrestled inside of my own mind and my own soul when writing those, you know, at, at times, you know, very hard to read parts. Um, but I knew that the truth needed to be told. So, I mean, if anything I can say is, you know, my goal is for you to experience those emotions and work through them um, and to come out on the other side with a different perspective and a new outlook on life. And and not to think that I wrote it to try to down white people. If you, if you actually, you know, pay attention, to, as I can tell that you have, um, to the theme of the story, I'm not trying to put down any people. Um, I'm actually trying to show the sins of all people, regardless of race. Um, and I, I really hope that when people read the story, they don't get so caught up in the hard to read parts and they can, you know, really find hope um, in the redemption side of the story. Um, you know, and, and that we ask each other, a uh, big theme of the book too is like, what is freedom? And, and once we understand what freedom is, we have to understand what is it worth um, to keep that freedom and to maintain that freedom and to give you know, equal freedom to everyone and, you know, to really question that concept um, so we know what it is and what that means for ourselves. So if, if people can come away with a different perspective and they can look at someone that doesn't look like them and understand a little bit more about what we what each other go through in this country and in this world as a whole, um, then I believe I've done my job. I think you hit the mark, Jaquentin. This This is not a stereotypical book and it challenges the thought process and yeah if you really dive into the book and you understand what's going on it's going to change what people think i thank you for writing this book and i can't wait to dive into the next one with that being said where can people find you how can they get a hold of you and is there anything that you'd like them to do for you um, they can find me on my website, uh, thewonderingalchemist.com. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook um, at Jaquentin Means. Um, Instagram is J-A-Q underscore M-E-A-N-S. And uh, TikTok, uh, The Wondering Alchemist, or at The Wondering Alchemist. Um, I, my call to action for people is to try to understand your neighbor. You know. America is a melting pot. Um, it's, it's a mix of people of a vast different number of races, cultures, and religions. 
Um, so, so my call to action is before we judge each other, before we get mad about the sins of our ancestors, before we, you know, feel guilty or not guilty about what has happened in our past, that we seek to learn a little bit more about each other, um, that we seek to love each other as neighbors um, outside of just our religion or our race, and we seek to grow together as both human beings and individuals um, so we can make this world a better place for our children. Well said. Jaquentin Means, his book, Willie, it's out now. You can find it on Amazon. I will send all the links into that show notes area, people. Hit the link, buy the book. It's a must-read book. Thank you, Jaquentin, for being with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.